This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by Spellcasting Focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday cake flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash day to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash day to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bahumia, everyone. Bahumia. I'm your dungeon master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Hard one, sure foot. Emily Axford. Moonshine Sabin, fiancé of moron. <laughs> <laughs> and Caldwell Tanner. <laughs> Beverly Togold V, the fanciest lad in the cold iron keep. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, so you guys are in sort of an interesting predicament. You guys are on your way to a very fancy party, specifically to talk to Gemma, maybe? Uh, Someone's going to talk to her, but your boy is a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but let's do a little recap. So last week, you guys left the Galateron Glades and headed back to the Crick to pick up your airship. There, you found the Crick Elves packing up to head west to Glade Home, the city of the High Elves. Meemaw had decided that the east side of Bohemia was too dangerous with all the recent attacks from Galateron. You guys told Meemaw about Ulfgar being imprisoned in the gem, and she told y'all about the Dwarven King's Hammers that could potentially break the spell. Uh, you said your goodbyes to Meemaw and Old Cobb and the rest of the Crick Elves as they headed west, uh, then you guys headed north to Frostwind, the Dwarven city in the frigid north, on a quest to free Alfgar and maybe possibly break up Gemma Bronzebeard's wedding to the Pale Prince. Once you... <laughs> <laughs> Right now, Jake is just like playing with the tears in his distressed jeans. You are like in full the, spiteful the role, mode. The role play is so deep that I Jake feels this. Like oh, you hate the pale dwarf. There's no line between me and Hard One except for that his legs are bigger than. <laughs> So once you guys made it to Frostwind, you met some very strange, unfriendly frost dwarves who did throw around I love you a lot, though. <laughs> Just a strange people, uh, and they kicked you out of many establishments for being quasi-rude. Mm. Friendly in their own way. Yes. Uh, you learned that the wedding was in seven days and that a powerful family called the Vinrils was hosting a welcome party for the guests. You bought some fancy clothes, and Moonshine polymorphed Hard One into a wolf since he would be recognized by the bronze beards. <laughs> so the three of you, along with Balnor, began heading towards Keep Vineral, and that's where we are now. Team, good plan. Roll out. <laughs> oh, before we uh, depart, can we add a quick footnote that we did send Kaka yeah. on that's a right. mission? To, we sent him as, um, on a mission to Glade Home. To say, we've arrived, we're here. Mm -hmm. This is essentially sending our friend a text to be like, I'm at the bar, he's about to meet me here. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'll text you if he's safe. <laughs> That's right. We still have a bird. <laughs> so you guys make your way through the city, and you're pretty easily able to find Keep Vinroll because you see the houses keep getting fancier and fancier the more north that you go. Ooh, you my see kind of town. keep keeping. Keeps keep keeping. <laughs> you guys see a lot of fancily dressed dwarves uh, are heading 
towards this one keep, uh, which you can kind of deduce to be Keep Vinral. Are there any other wolves on fancy <laughs> leashes? <laughs> there are not other wolves. Okay. Uh, you hmm. see Keep Vinral looks very different than the rest of the architecture here. The rest of it is very uh, utilitarian. Even the cold iron keep, uh, this big castle that you guys can kind of see uh, to the north of where you are right now, just kind of looks like a, a very big cathedral. It's still pretty straightforward. But Keep Vinral is strange and beautiful. There's a main archway, and the first level looks kind of like a normal castle. But jutting out from it are about a dozen towers that all wrap around each other. They have pointed like cone roofs uh, that are adorned with geodes and gems that twinkle in the night sky like stars. Uh, each of the towers has many windows and has a different light coming from the inside. Uh, it looks like there are different colored lanterns in every tower. So it looks like a big geode soft serve. <laughs> sort of. Mm. I lick it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get to the gates of this keep and you see a bunch of other fancily dressed dwarves kind of waiting to get in and you see that they're all checking in with a steward. You see that the staff at Keep Vineral here all wear blue shirts with purple buttons. That's their like house colors is purple and blue. Are the staff like taking anything from them? And there's like is there like a letter or like a seal or something being given? They are not taking a letter or a seal. They are just checking names off. You see, okay, they kind cool. of like oh, recognize a lot of the people. So we might in. be able to just say... Uh, yeah, that we met Morin. Morin, yeah. Your fiance. Morin, uh, <laughs> what's his last Vineral. name? Vineral. Morin Vineral. Vineral. Mm-hmm. Mor- Morin Vineral. Moron Vineral, yeah. I guess maybe we should just go up and see if they give us a problem for the wolf and then... Yeah. Should we say that, that the wolf is my werewolf bodyguard? <laughs> We should not say that because okay. I think they're going to be less inclined to let a werewolf in. Uh-huh. Right. Most likely. But should we say, I, I liked your angle on the emotional support animal. Yeah, it's like way too silly. I think Murph is not going <laughs> to let us get away with that shit at all. <laughs> how are we going to get a wolf emotional inside? Emotional support animal seems not like that silly. That's, uh, that's how animals get on planes now. You think so? It's mm. the, I think it's the only way. Okay. Then that's what we'll do. Okay. All right. Okay. We um we line She's up. She's a very unstable woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys line up and you approach this old pale dwarf steward who goes, I "Cannot bring your dog in here." Uh, oh, sir. Oh, oh, this is a oh. this actually isn't a dog. This is my emotional support animal. I lost my husband in the giant wars and uh I hate the giants. And I do as well. Urgh. And this Like how when he says giants. He hit the <laughs> dog hit giants too. My dog Hates giants. Yeah, mm. you should see every year on the anniversary of the death, this dog waits by the grave. It's very sad. That is tragic. I love this dog. <laughs> I lick his hand. <laughs> Thank you for licking me. He licks. He also he licks the dog. I lick this fur of this dog. <laughs> the dog tastes good. Yeah. Uh, what is what is your name? Uh, we are actually guests of Morin. Morin. Morin Veneral of Veneral's Generals. I'm familiar with Morin. He's my uh, he's my cousin. Yes, wow, a yeah, lot of cousins, yeah. yeah. A lot of cousins. I yeah. listen. <laughs> Thank you. What is your name, though? Because he would put you on the list. I don't know if he put us on the list. I um, know he did not put you on the did list. Did he put his? Just give me your name. Look, I'll look I, on I'm the gonna list. say I'm gonna say this. I I don't want you to. Sp- are you related to him, or are you related to his wife by blood? <laughs> <laughs> I am related to him. Okay, I'm just going to say something really delicate. Okay. <laughs> he proposed to me. To I do not care. He pro- he proposed to you to marry you? Yes. Are you married? <laughs> no, we're considering it. Okay. I do not... I do not... What is your name? I need to look at the... There are a lot of people in line. Moonshine. Your name is Moonshine. Moonshine what? Maybe Moonshine Vineral. <laughs> I'm wiggle my <laughs> empty finger at him. Uh, go ahead and give a persuasion check. Ooh, come on, baby. He'd probably be on the list. <gasps> oh! <Yes! laughs> oh my lord! Sweet I mean, a nat twenty. You just rolled an nat twenty. <laughs> You're flirt. You're like flirting with him a little bit. You see his uh, pale cheeks blush. <laughs> yes, you're very forward. And it makes me a little uncomfortable that you are engaged to my cousin, but <laughs> you, that is a deep neckline. You are a fine-looking woman. <laughs> yeah, I guess, honestly, I said my name was Moonshine, but tonight call me Blake. Yeah, Morin said that he was into a poly thing, if you're interested. 
cousin or not. Very interesting. <laughs> Morin is a, I love my cousin Morin. Oh, he is God. a fine looking man. <laughs> <laughs> you no, oh, Miss Moonshine, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble if they find out that I I let in someone who's not uh, who's not on the list here. I tell you what the dog. I usually when I'm on the dance floor I draw a lot of attention, but tonight I'm gonna rein it in just for you. Will you dance with me tonight? <laughs> What's your name? Yeah, the answer is yes, but I want to say your name at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say I do and then your name. <laughs> My name is Alexi. Yes, Alexi. I will, Alexi. Okay, I've never danced with a girl before. <laughs> oh, well, I'm looking forward to teaching you. Very good. You teach me to dance. You know what? <laughs> Just... Uh, Come on in, keep it quiet, keep your dog away, you're gonna get me in trouble. Okay, okay. no, I'm not. I'll only the good kind of trouble, Alexi. No, oh, okay, you <laughs> please dance with me, you're a very pretty woman. Okay, we walk... Every poor spores move, uh, it, it, Just make sure he's not married. I honestly hate these little men. <laughs> Moonshine, you you know you can't marry this whole town, right? I just this is the most success, successful I've ever been with flirting. With something and I that feel wasn't like, a succubus. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I guess I feel got like it. I gotta use it to our advantage. Fair enough. All right, we go in. You guys enter, and you're escorted by um, other stewards, and you kind of follow the other guests into the main ballroom. Uh, there are tables for dining that circle around the outside, and a dance floor in the middle. Uh, the tables and the dance floor are on raised platforms, and servants travel below through little trenches that are designed to look like dwarven minecart tracks. Cute. Cute. And in lieu of platters, they wheel around these little mock minecarts stacked with delicious looking trays of food and kegs of wine and ale. There are lanterns floating above with blue flames, giving the dining area a light blue glow. Over the dance floor, the lanterns are constantly changing colors, and fancy dwarves dance to the beat of drums. You see on a stage to the side is a band with two drummers playing intricate dance beats accompanied by a guy playing this weird metal instrument. It's a series of twisted bars that he pinks with a hammer, creating a warbling sound that sounds like a theremin. Uh, there are two tables near the stage at the front of the room. One is empty and one appears to be various important members of like the Vinroll family. They've got the blue suits with like purple buttons and stuff uh, mm. who are like rubbing elbows with guests and stuff. Do we see Morin? Uh, you do not see Morin yet. Okay. Honestly, I'd kind of like to avoid him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hardwon, who do you know in the Bronzebeard family? Um, like, is there anyone that we could potentially have as an ally and reveal who we truly are to? Yeah. And also stop peeing on that. I, <laughs> and licking your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I have, was chasing my tail, licking my penis. <laughs> peeing. Stop peeing Just in Sniffing under a woman's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty dumb now, right? I was dumb yeah. before. Yeah. Um, I'm friends with, or Gemma's older sister always had a soft spot for me. I don't know if she should know that I'm here, but okay. if you say that mm -hmm. you know me, okay, uh, that might be the way in. So what are we even trying to do here? I say we just kind of mingle a little bit first. Yeah, we wanted to find out what they think about Theala, right? Yeah, well, yeah. my thinking is maybe the king is not opposed to helping us. You know, yeah. so maybe we should try and work our way up, kind of rub some elbows, see what their general opinion on Galateron and Theala is, and maybe we can get them on our side. If they find out we have Ulfgar, then maybe they'll be willing to help us. I doubt it, but okay. it's worth a shot. I eat scraps of food from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you kind of gather from being here that this is a very rich family that mm -hmm. is kind of trying to shoehorn themselves into the wedding process. Like, the king is not here. I so mm -hmm. that's good though for us, I think. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but this is these are very important people. You see, that a lot of people are dancing and stuff. You guys are certainly able to like find your own kind of private table with just you guys, though. Mm -hmm. um, who's dancing? Um, lots of lots of what dwarfs. age group of people? Young all, people or like a bunch of like cool ants? Both. It's kind of it's like there's like young dwarves like grinding up on each other, mm -hmm. but like dancing real weird. There's like glow stick guy out there by himself there's like old Ooh. grandmas and grandpas like going. I go over to the the cool aunts and grandpas and I dance for them okay uh -huh. I put on a little show so Beverly uh -huh. Beverly goes out to the dance floor and starts dancing you guys are like some of the few non dwarves are here but there are some people that were like bronze beard guests and you guys even recognize 
at this party are a couple of humans that were in the battle for Galateron fighting for the White Knights. So you can kind of deduce hey. that some of the White Knights went to uh, Iron Deep. The White Knights were bad, though, right? No, White no. Knights were good. White Knights were good. Yeah. The Chosen. Oh, the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to try and talk to the White Knight people? I'm dancing. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so Beverly goes Don't out. Talk to me while I'm on the dance. Floor. <laughs> starts cutting a rug Beverly's near the grand. Freaking it. <laughs> Beverly starts cutting a rug near the grandmas and grandpas. Mm-hmm. Oh, the sick little dwarf boy, very cute. Oh, he danced around. I love it. He Everyone here is so nice. Around, though. <laughs> You love it here. You I, dance for me. Yeah, I grab one of the uh, wealthier, more connected-looking grandmas, and I do like a, oh, let's dance together. Beautiful. Give me a, uh, <laughs> go ahead and give me a performance check with advantage. Okay. Oh. I got a six and a five. Oh. A six and a five we don't get a nat 20 every time. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be a 10, I guess. A 10? Okay. Mm-hmm. You see, so you just dance with this grandma. Uh-huh. Oh, I like dancing with the, the young man, the very handsome young man. You have girlfriend, young man. Uh, I'm, I'm spoken for. I set for. you up for my with my granddaughter. Okay. Yes. Maybe just you. T- you get married to my granddaughter. <laughs> yes. She loves you. Wow. Everyone's so quick I love to you. wed in this culture. <laughs> do you do you want to be my grandson? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I marry you to my granddaughter. <laughs> uh, you guys are just like dancing to yeah, the speed, and Bever- yeah. Beverly kind of just like fits right in, just de- doing a little dance. You guys don't see it at home, but I'm doing a little techno dance right now. Yeah, we're all yeah. swaying. I'm waiting for a slow song. Uh, so you guys, you know, this whole process of like you guys getting in and all of that and getting into the dance floor and starting dancing and everything, I'm going to say you guys are about like 35 minutes into this Uh-oh. polymorph <laughs> situation. Yeah. Right, okay. So what Clock's do we want to do with you as a wolf? Or how are we going to... Yeah, is um, do I, do I know if any of the bronze beards are there yet? There's just a lot of cousins. It's like a lot of bronze beard cousins mm. and stuff. It's like the rowdy boys mm. who want to go out and like drink on the wedding weekend and yeah. like meet people. Like Wilhelm Bronzebeard, who's Gemma's dad. You see like some of his like nieces and nephews are there. Maybe I'll go cool. over to a niece or nephew and say, y'all know if Gemma's coming? Or what's your, what's the sister's name? It's Jaina and Gemma. Okay, Jaina. I'm going to say, y'all know if uh, Jane is coming? Uh, are you going up to the dance floor? Or are you like going to a couple at like a uh, I, I just want to look for some of the rowdy the rowdy cousins. Okay. Yeah, one of the rowdy boys. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, the rowdy boys would love to get a dog drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you find a table of three bronze beard dwarves. Uh, these iron deep dwarves with these red beards and long red hair. You fi- uh, find a table with... Uh, Two men and one woman, and they seem like they're a little bit drunk. And they go, "How you, how you doing, Miss? Uh, what do you know? What's a crank elf doing out here? These, I mean, this is insane. Right? I'm you ever been to a party like this? I know. I'm you ever been to a party like this? I mean, it feels a little bit uh, appropriative, you know. But I, I don't know. Maybe it's no. Not. We don't. Uh, we don't judge. Everything's okay. good here. I like oh, this right, place. Cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You're being put. Okay, so you feel a little. Hmm, all right, let's not talk wink, about wink, it. Wink, 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 wink. Yeah. I'm just good. gonna. I'm. I'm wondering if Jaina's coming. Jaina, yeah, Jaina. Uh, Tonight, Jaina and Gemma are coming by. Yeah. Tonight, okay. Cool. That's that's what I heard. Yeah, because I'm in town. Because I'm I'm friends with uh, Jaina's friend from the Dwarfenage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who do you know from the Dwarfenage? S- Sam. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead and uh, just roll a raw luck check. Just roll. Hmm. I got a ten. A ten? What does that mean? They know a Sam. I was gonna, okay. I was gonna say one through a five. There's no Sam at the door. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. Sam, yeah, he's kind of a weird guy, but yeah, well, I don't mind him. I don't feel yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. It's like it's like lukewarm water. You kind of want it hot or cold. Otherwise, it's not serving much of a purpose. Hey, man, <laughs> sister, they all laugh. Fucking Sam, man. Uh. Uh, I, I, I'm really surprised that the whole, you know, pale alliance is happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, come sit down. Uh, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, let's yeah. actually talk. I lay at their feet so I can hear. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I'm gonna need, I might need you to feed me some questions. Yeah, sorry, I dropped the ball on mm. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it worked out. Yeah. Um, and he goes, so you're, you're a crick elf, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of tell the, although you're. Usually, Crick Elves, I don't want to judge, but they're usually a little bit more unshowered. Oh, yeah, I'm not showered. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if I okay. seem showered, you that's... Looked a, you were, like, shimmering. I thought it was just, you know, lotions and such, but it's sweat? 
No, it's lotions and sweat okay. and oil. Hey, I'm, you know what? I'm into it. Bacon hey. grease. I do a lot of cooking, and I get grease all over myself. I'll tell you what. If you flip a fish, grease is getting everywhere. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I think she's been rolling in the snow a lot, too. Uh, oh, that's true. Maybe maybe all the snow. I did do a mm, snow angel earlier. Yeah, I'm not used to it. That's kind of like a shower. It's cold as hell out here. Yeah. Yeah, look, Galateron was our main ally. And, you know, once they got taken over by the Chosen, Iron Deep started preparing for war. And we haven't historically had the best relationship with the uh, Pale Dwarves, but they have a hell of an army, and we kind of got to start... <sighs> So this is to steel yourself against the eventual rival of Theala. And the Pale Dwarves don't take kindly to Theala either because... They don't like Theala? They, don't, they do not like Theala. Interesting. I could kiss you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please do. <laughs> no, I'm engaged to too many people. <laughs> and he goes, Theala is not going to pay the tax anymore to the pale dwarfs she says that she's a god and she should they should pledge fealty to her and these these folks are quite religious they really like their rules and they really like moradin and they uh they do not take kindly to uh somebody saying that they're god aside from theala how do they feel about the heroes that's a good question i think that all dwarves Generally, like Ulfgar. Yeah, he's badass. Yeah, he's super badass. Yeah, he's freaking cool. lo- the other guy and the girl like just start quietly being like, he's "Fucking rules." Go- yeah. Ulfgar fucking rules. <laughs> I do it too. He's, he's so fucking, cool. He fucking, he's so fucking cool. He fucking rules. He's fucking cool. He's so cool. Moonshine, do shots for Ulfgar. <laughs> Let's do a round of shots for Ulfgar. You want to do a round? Of- I'll do a round of shots My for Ulfgar. My dog's gonna want one too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this dog rules. He drinks. <laughs> I'm gonna get your dog drunk. Uh, he starts pouring some ale down. Uh, like look, hard look, 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 look. <laughs> said that Harmon has a little dog vest that says "Please feed me drinks." <laughs> sure. I'm also wearing a collar with Ulfgar in it on the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that's so good. Can I talk to the old woman a little more? Sure, yeah, you're on the dance floor with mm-hmm. this old woman. Grinding. You're going to marry my granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to yes. meet her. Hey, um, I'm just wondering. I'm just trying to get to know people in town. I'm from Hillholm. Um, oh, I'm the yes. son of Reuben Old Tuesday. You know, the Ruby Tuesday magnate. I'm familiar with, yeah. the, with the franchise. I he like sent me up here. Fries. He sent me up here to attend the wedding because uh, I, we're thinking about opening a chain up here. And I just want to meet some of the nobles and the higher ups to try and like you know get that through with the zoning and whatnot. Do you know who I might need to talk to about that? Uh, go ahead and roll a deception check. Okay. That's an eleven. <laughs> an eleven. Okay. So you're not like totally given away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this grandma just kind of goes, "I am venerable. I'm I'm small business owner. We do not need. Uh, we we have." Uh, the stores are mineral stores. These are good stores. Okay. We do not need them. I'm you just do, you do not. Feelers. You do not marry my granddaughter. I do not like you anymore. You go. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I hate you, but I I love you too. I you, love you. I hate I you. I love you. I hate you. Do not marry my granddaughter. You are not my son anymore. She pushes away. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Hardwon's about to turn into Hardwon again. Um, yeah, I'll say we're about 45 minutes in. Why don't we have him hide either in the kitchen or uh, somewhere out of the public view, and then we can try and get Jaina over to him. Oh, this is just like I'm back at Iron Deep dating Gemma. <laughs> 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 hide me from the public. <laughs> I'm not good enough for Gemma. Whoa. I get it. So this raw. is a different narrative no, than you've given us before. Sorry, I'm a little drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you see Balnor's out the there grind, grinding with that grandma. <laughs> Oh, that'd be so nice to marry Balnor off. <laughs> I, you, yeah. you marry me, old man. You and I. I guess I think we can trust these pale dwarves, but I don't want to give them this like tool for world dominance either. Well, we're not going to give them Ulfgar. We're just going to say free Ulfgar. We know where Ulfgar is. Because it will is. piss the Ala off. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that what we need is, I think we need counsel with the king. Yeah. Suddenly you see Gemma Bronzebeard enters <gasps> the room. This is like can't hardly wait. <laughs> the room slows. You see Gemma Bronzebeard enters, flanked by another woman and a steward. She looks ravishing. She's wearing a red dress that shows off all her dwarven curves. She's got flowing red hair and a finely braided beard. <laughs> Her neck and ears glisten with diamonds, and her blue eyes look particularly piercing under the blue lights. 
And hard one, you recognize one of the women with her is her sister, Jaina Bronzebeard. Jaina's got red hair and freckles, but no beard. Uh, she's got a very strong build. She's like a dwarven brand of Tarth. Uh, she wears mm-hmm. a long cloak over a nice suit and dresses more masculine than her sister. Uh, and you see she even has a dwarven war hammer at her side. Uh, and the steward with her is a very old man with a hunchback wearing a bronze robe, the color of House Bronzebeard. And you see they all approach the table on the stage with all of like the Vineral elite and begin kind of exchanging pleasantries. And they're talking up there for a bit, just doing their like introductions and stuff. Bev, you're on the dance floor, right? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. I got a one, but I get to reroll. Oh, dope. Ooh. 16. Sweet. So, Bev, you hear a couple people, like, kind of bitterly whisper, Summer dwarf, come to, come to marry the pale prince. Goldanes think they're better than us. Marrying him off to a summer dwarf. <laughs> Looks like... Psh, psh, yeah, psh, right? Very oh. upsetting. Get out of here. You're not my grandson. <laughs> Whatever. I love you. You're not my grandson. I love you, too. <laughs> After a little bit, you see Jaina and Gemma... Uh, go to their own table with their steward and you see that uh, Gemma looks kind of bored. You see that there are also like several empty seats up there. It looks like maybe the Pale Prince was supposed to come and he's not there. Hard one, what do you think if we just go over by Gemma and you just become hard one in her sight? Like, do you think she's she's going to be the least likely to be mad at you, right? Why don't we go over and, and you guys can meet her. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 She doesn't. Let's need to let's know. dip a toe and let's take her temperature on hard one. The whole hard one situation. What if we have him go under the table and wait there and then transform and then all of a sudden appear from under do the you table? Do you want to do? Do you want to do like a stealth check to move through the trenches as a wolf? I'll let you use wolf stats for that. I imagine that oh, the table. Oh, also cast Pass Without Trace on all of us. I'll let you. I'll let you cast Pass Without Trace. You could definitely do that subtly enough. Yeah. I guess I don't know what I gain by sneaking up. I feel like you guys need to get an in with Gemma. I think you like, just need you to avoid being either. seen transforming. Is the main. Yeah, thing. that's what I'm just trying to make it so that no Got one it. sees I, you transform. When it's a little closer, I can just crawl under okay. a table okay. and do it. Cool. All right. So I guess we'll just go over. Yeah, I kind of sidle up as well. Do you want to say anything? So you're kind of at this table with yeah, these bronze so I think beards. I'm, um, oh, I just saw Jaina come in, so oh, I'm gonna go. I feel a little intimidated. Should we go over? I mean, I think I'll go. Why don't I go over? Yeah, why don't you go yeah. over? Let's just go over just us. You yeah. say congratulations. You're very thrilled for her. Yeah. Your friend is Sam. Mm. Ra- I'm Razdin, by the way. Nice Razdin, to meet you. Razdin, nice to meet you. Yeah, why don't I go Razdin over there? Beard. Once you see me doing it, you'll be like, oh, it's nothing. She's same old Jaina. All right. All right, yeah. So you uh, go up and like approach the stage and approach yeah. Gemma and Jaina? Yeah. And the steward? Um, and I quickly, like, via report sports, I'm like, hard one, I'm going to name drop you. Yeah, that's cool. She, there's I think no that's hard my feelings. Aim. Okay. So you walk up to the table. Yeah. Or as you're starting to get close, you do, it is Jaina, the old man steward, uh-huh. uh, wearing a bronze beard robe, and Gemma. So whatever you say, all three here. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say, um, hello, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. You guys got your own separate table here, but I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Moonshine, and I'm good friends with Hardwan Surefoot, who is from Iron Deep. You see Gemma's eyes light up, and you see Jaina just, like, puts her hand on her face, like, <laughs> what the fuck? And you see the old steward goes, get out before I call security on you. Okay, I'm so sorry. I haven't seen him in a Hard while. Hardwan Surefoot is not a friend of the Bronze Beard family. Okay, I am. I am so I sorry. I deeply apologize. I honestly, I was not invited here by the Surefoots. I was invited here by the, um, uh, by the what is their last Vineral. name? By the Venerals. And I just thought it was a funny coincidence. I was not trying to start anything. Mm. Uh, Gemma goes, "How is hard one? By the way, it does not matter how hard one is. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye." He's doing great, by the way. His quads have gotten even bigger. <laughs> I lick your hand. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm separate from Moonshine. I'm kind of like eavesdropping near the table. Oh, okay. Because I want to hear what uh, the steward says Dope. about Hard One after. Okay, Ooh. go ahead. Go ahead and roll a stealth check. Okay. Oh, boy. 
There we go. 17. Uh, 17. And, but you guys have Pass Without Trace, right? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. an extra 10. So you have a 27. Cool. Ooh. This guy has pretty good perception. Jaina has pretty good perception. Let's see. She rolls in that one. So, Bev, I'll say that you're kind of down in the trench, uh, kind of hiding up against the wall near where um, Gemma and Jaina and the steward are. Cool. And you can also see that there is a hallway nearby. Oh. And you see glowing light and you can kind of gather that that's how you get to those colored towers that were outside like the different ah, lights okay okay so you're down there and you're listening and you hear the steward go what does that woman think she's doing coming up here and bringing up hard one sure foot it's not a big deal barrel just like get off my back okay <laughs> and jana goes Let's just, let's talk about something other than hard one Shorefoot, shall we? Let's just move on. He's not here. One of his friends is here. Whatever. Let's move on. So I'm down with like the mine carts that yeah. bring people food. Yep. Do they have food yet? They don't. They do not have food yet. I want to hide a note uh, under the goblet or the food that's going to be going to Gemma. Hell yeah. Okay. And I'm going to say, meet me by the glowing hallway, HS. Ah! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Okay. So, Bev, you're hiding down there. You see a servant comes by, takes their orders. Sliders. <laughs> Bev, you hear her order order the polar bear sliders. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Delicious. And, so blubbery. Uh, yeah, you see a few minutes later, uh, time's ticking on hard one. The waiter comes back mm -hmm. with a cart. With her sliders. I slip under her slider. Okay. Uh, I slide go ahead, it under a slider. Go ahead and give me a sleight of hand check against this guy's perception. Oh, uh, 17. 17. Pretty good. Okay. Woo. You beat this guy's perception. Whew. You are able to slide a note into the slider. It says, meet me in the colored hallway, HS. Uh, what are you guys doing? Beryl is such a piece of shit. He's just such a fucking sniffle. <laughs> okay. You need asshole. to go to that glowing hallway. What? Why? You need to go to that glowing hallway. What? Why? You, you didn't hear? No. Bev just told us in report I've been story. pissed about Barrel this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Hard one. Okay. Get your shit together because you're about to turn into Hard One Sherpa and you need to be in that glowing hallway. <sighs> so I'm just going to grab him by the gruff like he's a misbehaving dog. <laughs> and <laughs> a I'm going to start dragging him to the glowing hallway. However, I am being aware if there is ever... It, does it look like it's going to be hard to get to the glowing hallway? Is there going to be like... You might want to do a Security? stealth check to kind of like slip in. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we'll do. Okay, go ahead and do a stealth check. You sure didn't want to like put a tablecloth around you like a big dress and have the dog <sighs> walk underneath it? Okay, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. um, you also I get advantage on stealth checks because I'll, I'll say that you can hide your boots of Elven kind. Yeah, yeah, I got a twenty-nine. Mm. You got a twenty-nine. Because I, I get a plus 10. Yeah. Did you add a plus 10? Uh, that was with my plus okay. 10. Okay, I'm going to flat out say that with a 29, the way that you guys get back there is you see that uh, one of the guys has like a cart uh, yes. that he has to bring up onto the stage to kind of get it back to the hallway to bring it back to the kitchen. And uh, Moonshine and Hard One, you guys slip in after he's like gone up the ramp. So he's already got some momentum, so he doesn't totally notice it. You start going down this hallway, you see that there are a series of doors with windows next to them that take you up to the different towers. You see there's a red, a green one, and a blue one in this hall. Uh, so what are you guys doing? So you guys Wait, are just in this long hallway. Did Bev say which glowing hallway to go to? In he did his not. Note? We could still report spores though. Oh, but I did not put that in the note. We could each be at one of those. Mm. Cool. So you report spores and you say that you'll each go to one. So you guys are going to kind of like roll out from under the cart and yeah. each like kind of subtly open a door. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll say with that roll, you guys are successfully able to do it. Uh, which colors are you guys going in? Red, blue, green. Okay. I'll do red. Cool. Green. Uh, so hard ones in red. Moonshine goes to green. Uh -huh. Blue is still unaccounted for. Bev, uh, you are hiding near the bronze beards and you see Gemma as she goes to take a bite, pulls the little note out, looks at it, and you see her eyes go wide, and she kind of shifts her eyes and looks in both directions, um, and she sees the hallway. I'm gonna say Beryl's still like ranting, uh, and he's <laughs> kind of an old dummy, um, but I'm gonna say Jane is gonna do a perception check, but Gemma like really quickly lowers the paper. Fucking Jaina's, Jaina's good, and she just rolled a goddamn six, but uh, so she does not see it. Okay. Uh, so Jaina so she not notices? See it. Uh, so Gemma notices. Is Gemma, Gemma getting up? Gemma sees it, and Gemma goes, Jane, I have to go to the bathroom. Stay here and talk to Beryl. 
and you see uh, Gemma gets up. The diamond is in the rough. I repeat, the diamond is in the rough. <laughs> I what a diamond she is. <laughs> she had a glow up, right? Right, guys? <laughs> Big time. Uh, I shake out of my wolf form. Okay. I'm just chilling in the hallway. Is there a way I'm for trying me to... to think of a way to hint for her to go into the red hallway. So Gemma enters the hallway and she sees that there are people passing and stuff. Okay, I'm going to send Pawpaw to go <gasps> point at the red hallway. Okay, I'm going to do a stealth roll for Pawpaw. At plus 10, he's in the past without trace crew. Pulse. Pawpaw got a goddamn 28. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Papa, Papa fucking squeezes under the door and <laughs> scrambles down. No bones. <laughs> and you see um, Gemma sees Papa, lets out like a little gasp, and he goes, wait, 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 wait. Like he just like, gives her like an intelligent look, like I am an animal companion. I'm not a normal goddamn possum. <laughs> and she like looks super fucking confused. Um, but then Papa runs under the red door and hard one, you see Papa scrambles under the door that you're in. Hey, 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 hey little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what's that you say? <laughs> Gemma's coming. Do I have anything in my teeth, Papa? <laughs> he looks up. He's, he starts licking your teeth. It's fixing my hair. Uh, and... Make sure the crick knot's nice and tight, Papa. <laughs> Hard one. You see Gemma opens the door, and she sees you, and she instantly slams the door behind her, and she goes, Hard one, what are you doing here? Hey. <laughs> my, my dad is going to kill you. This is my wedding week. I know, and... First of all, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Didn't see this, this coming. No, I didn't see this at all. I'm happy you're happy. I... If you're happy, whatever, doesn't matter. Not my place. <laughs> we should as find as... somewhere better to talk. <laughs> where Where do you want to go, Gemma? I don't fucking know where to go, man. This okay. isn't my goddamn all right, castle. All right, this isn't my castle either. I don't know anything about House Finral. I was invited to this. I'm supposed to make an appearance with, you look with Gerard. By the way, I don't know Thank if I'm you. allowed to say that. You, but look, I, you look good, too. You look, you look really good, good too. Right. That's you look good. at you. Oh, well, I wanna, should we go see what's up the stairs? Uh, sure. Yeah, of course. Yes. Let's go up the stairs. Uh, so you guys go up the stairs. Let me yes. just roll a check to see if I'm just going to leave. Else. I well, feel like I, I'm done I was for the gonna, episode. Yeah, I was going to say, like, can I go, like, kind of keep watch of the door? Sure. Oh, that's a good idea. Like, so I'd you like can to, kind like, of... sort of be there, and then if anyone comes by. The poor spores me. Well, yeah, but I'll let you know. But also, if anyone comes by, I'll just pretend like I thought it was a bathroom and that... I was waiting for someone to come out. Cool. Classic. Um, I'm going to roll to see if there's anybody in this tower as you guys are climbing up. There is not. You guys climb the stairs. It's this very it's this very narrow spiral staircase because they kind of just go up and curve around. Uh, and you get to your first door and you can see out the window that it's a little balcony. <gasps> Oh my god, this is too romantic. <laughs> okay, uh, the light snow falling? There's a light snow falling. <laughs> cool. Oh, no. uh, I hold the door for Gemma. You hold the door for Gemma. <laughs> Gemma goes out there. Hard one, you join her. Bev, down at the table, uh, you've got Jaina and Beryl down there. And suddenly, a very drunk member of the <sighs> Vineral family. Oh, mm. hell yeah. Um, she, she's got like a, a purple dress on with blue. You know that to be their house color, so you assume it's, it's one of them. Oh uh, she walks over and she points to Jaina and she goes, You think you'll come to, you summer dwarf? You can just come here and marry our men? You just think you can come here? That's my boyfriend. That's my boyfriend that you're oh marrying. Oh my God, that pale princess of Gemma. <laughs> and uh, J- Jaina goes... Please, you're drunk. <laughs> Jaina kind of like That's starts to get in. starts to like kind of get up in her face, and you see one of this uh, venerable woman's relatives kind of like comes up. Oh, she had a lot to drink. We love you. We love you very much. Uh, and uh, they so pull her away. The I relay this information. And Bev, you do see that the old steward that was outside taking names is just mm-hmm. walking around. Have you, has anyone seen Moonshine? She owes, she owes me a dance. <laughs> oh, no. Has anybody seen Moonshine? Oh. Moonshine. She owes me a oh, dance. Oh, this is breaking my heart. Okay, I'm going to go dance with him. I'm going to go. <laughs> Wait, are you really? Too sad, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to take somebody a Somebody comes in the him. door and kills me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, which, I'll keep an eye. I'll keep an you eye. You can't. Yeah. You pick one. You go to the dance floor or you stay in the hallway. 
I'll, I'll trade places with her. Okay. Yeah. I'll trade places with me. I, Dev, I go ahead and give me another so stealth check. I'm this guy. Re -roll. That's a one, re -roll. but I get to reroll. Re -roll. Oh, Woo. God. That's a six. That's not much better. Oh, six. Add you 10, though. Oh, right. 16. 16. Okay. Whew. Um, Bev, you start to sneak in that hallway, and you see this dwarf in... Um, purple and blue, obviously part of the Vinral family, yeah. clocks you. Oh, um, I was just looking for the bathroom. The bathroom's not this way. You go other way, the bathroom. This private area. Okay. Vinral's only. Even if I need to do number two. Even if you... I don't need to hear about your poop, you boy. Oh, it is diarrhea. I don't want to Do you have know a special about, diarrhea toilet? I do not have a special diarrhea toilet. I have diarrhea all the time. I eat polar bear meat. I don't eat any vegetables. I have diverticulitis. What is that? That is when you do not eat enough vegetables in your stomach. You start shit. Well, I'm actually... I'm a, I'm a paladin. Maybe I could help you with that. You're a paladin. You can help me with my shit. Yeah. Do you okay, want me to do a lesser restoration? You and, you and me go to the bathroom together. You, <laughs> you help me poop. You help me poop. I'm old man. You'll have to I'm show you man. his colon, Ben. I, right. I need you to heal me while I poop okay, gotcha. because I have hemorrhoids. I have hemorrhoids and I need your help. Oh, All right. I, you know what? <laughs> you and I go. Okay. You and I go to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> so this, this, this dwarf, this dwarf <laughs> takes you to the bathroom uh, and, and just starts... Horrible, horrible shit. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Restore me. Restore me, boy. Yes, I restore me. I lesser restoration. Oh, help me. Help me. Uh, you lesser restoration. I like oh. hold a hand out under oh, the stall. He, he holds your he holds your hand. Oh, it make it go out easier. Thank you. Hard one, you're unprotected. There's nobody watching Thank the door. You. Balnor! Thank you so much. Balnor, you're our only hope. <laughs> Balnor is just out there dancing. Grinding uh, with the grandma. Grandma. He's just grinding with the grandma. <laughs> Moonshine, uh, you're out there dancing with the old man. Hey, everybody. It's Emily here to talk to you about Aura Frames. Mother's Day is coming up, and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well, look no further. Aura Frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high-resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures, and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most, so this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Pawpaw to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash P-A-W P-A-W. Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around 200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you, and for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you um and hard one 
You are out on this balcony with Gemma. <laughs> you see that uh, there's this quasi-private balcony. It's facing north, so it's not facing most of the other keeps. You see out here, there's a view of the Cold Iron Castle. Uh, it looks like this big cathedral. There's all these stained glass windows and everything in these spires. It's a super cool looking castle. Uh, and you see the purple rift in the sky, like this Whoa. beautiful Ooh. northern light. So romantic. Gemma, do you really believe Moradin's on the other side of that? <laughs> and, <laughs> Let me show you what I believe in, Gemma. Gemma. And Gemma goes, why are you in Frostwind, hard one? Look, first of all, I did not come to ruin your wedding. I know... Nobody wants me here. I know you don't want me here. Hell, I don't even want to be here. You're making things harder, hard one. <laughs> you see, she turns dramatically. I'm, I'm doing this to get away from my father. Out here, and she walks over to the railing and she looks at the sky. I can, I can start anew and I can forget the life that I had in Iron Deep where I'm under my family's thumb. I can maybe have some semblance of being myself and not being controlled every second. Although the people here are really weird and kind of controlling, so... And you being here is just... makes things even weirder. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know you want to forget everything that ever happened in Iron Deep. That's what you want, right? I don't want to... Look at your new beautiful house. I didn't come here to ruin your fucking wedding, Gemma. Then why are you here, hard one? I have this jewel. It's got Ulfgar inside of it. You see her eyes go wide. What do you mean you have a gem with Ulfgar inside of it? Ulfgar's missing. I hold the gem up to her face. <laughs> <laughs> he Holy hates shit. me. He <laughs> seems really angry. <laughs> yeah. It's a real long story, but I was involved in the war in later on. I'm, I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. I didn't know you cared. I, you know, it wasn't always don't, pretty, don't. and there were complications, <laughs> Gemma. But I feel like you were the only person that ever liked me for me. Everyone else is just after my family name. Even me being up here, I'll never not be a Bronzebeard. Well, I'm glad that you can continue to run away. That's good for you, Gemma. <gasps> And you left Iron Deep. Petty. <laughs> I'm not giving up. <laughs> I hold a grudge. Yeah, are you guys coaching me through this? I think we're. Just being I, like, know, I think no, at this point, would, at this yeah, point, you guys don't have. I, at oh, this yeah. point, you guys are far away. You don't have uh, rapport words. Mm. Well, I'm glad you're getting away from your dad for once. That's that's nice, but. You're still listening to everything he's ever asked of you. Marry the Pale Prince. Life isn't... Break up with Hard One. <laughs> we, were, we were kids, Hard One. It was... It's something that's in our past. It's something that's beautiful and something that happened, but it doesn't need yep. to control us for the rest of our lives. No. <laughs> it's over for both of us, for sure. And that's why I totally want you to get married. The timing is weird that I'm here and I need your help, but I just have to get Ulfgar out of this gym so I can help my friends win this war. You can live the rest of your life with your sickly boyfriend, husband, prince, king, whatever. I don't, I've, king, I've whatever. never, I haven't, I haven't met him yet. Something's going Jesus. on. These people are hiding something from us. The Pale Prince isn't here. He was supposed to come here with me tonight. He was supposed to greet me when I showed up. We exchanged letters. He was supposed to be here. What? Where's what? What's going on? Where's your father? My father. He's at the. He's at the Cold Iron Keep. He doesn't like parties. You know that. She points to the castle. Pretty castle. <laughs> Pretty castle. It is <laughs> quite beautiful out here. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> I stare pensively into the distance. <laughs> Why did you really come out here, hard one? <laughs> I I just want you to know that that I'm sorry for the way things ended. I 
if we were going to break up, we should have done it for our own reasons. We shouldn't have done it for your father. I agree. I guess we'll never know if we would have worked. Yeah, you're you're a princess. I'm a bastard. You're a beautiful, beautiful dwarf, and I'm an ugly, ugly man. She kisses you. <laughs> <laughs> I wink at Papa. <laughs> oh yeah, Papa's there. <laughs> ram, ram, ram. Papa covers his head, his eyes. None of you guys are in the hallway, right? No. no one's in the hallway, what else no. is going on? I'm sorry, I took too much pity on that guy. Dude, I hope you're dancing with them. So, hard one. You and Gemma kiss. Sick. <laughs> and go ahead and give me a perception check. Oh dear. You're perceiving how much tongue she's eating. Shout out to the two crew. Oh, <laughs> oh no. That's right. That's how good that kiss is, though. Oh, I know. Two pairs of lips. Oh, I can't wait no, for something Papa's normal to compromised happen. compromised out there. Yeah, Papa could have seen something. Yeah, what about Papa's perception? Hard one. Gemma kisses you. And in this one moment, you guys are finally together without any prying eyes or people pulling you apart. And you're distracted for just a second. The door kicks open. And an assassin's knife whoosh, flies through the air and sticks into Gemma's neck. No. no what? No. What the fuck are you talking about? There's nobody to see uh, him follow you guys up into the tower. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative to see if you can catch him. Goddamn right. What, what, I got to save her. She's dead. No. She got sneak attack damage. She, she's a commoner. You son of a bitch. Oh my god. What'd you roll? What'd you a roll? 10 for initiative. Ugh. He rolled a nat 20. What? You see this dwarf, it has a black hood on, but you see he has clothes on that are like blue and purple. Like either he is part of the Vineral family or he disguised. is disguised as the Vineral family. And you see he runs forward and he jumps off and he feather falls. God. <sighs> Gemma. Gemma. Gemma, wake up. You see, Gemma, she's, baby. Hey. She's she's cold and dead. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Um, I run down the stairs. Go ahead and... Are you being stealthy? I don't think so. Okay. You gotta get away from this scene. You run down the stairs. You run down the stairs. Uh, you start to hear somebody coming up the stairs. You, you gotta hide. Up you the can't stairs, have, or what you do you can't have do? this thought. Although... The fucking note's gonna be on her. The note that says, meet me in the glowing hallway. Shit, but I don't even know about that note. Or I guess I do. Is he close enough? Is he close enough to report spores us? Is he out of range? He's out of range. Shit. Shit. Yeah, I guess Papa I... Papa has scrambled up and he's like in your shirt right now. Papa, what do I do? <laughs> Papa starts scrambling up the stairs. All right, I'll follow Papa. Papa and you scramble up the stairs. Let me roll to see if anybody else is up there. Jesus Christ. Oh, so th he can go further up? It's going to look Yeah, yeah, like he can go further up. It wasn't all the way up. Okay. Yeah. You start. I did do it. I rolled the goddamn two. Ugh. Why I feel bad? I'm, I took too much pity on that dumb guy. Yeah, and I took too much pity on this guy with bad bowels. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, the tragic thing about it is that this guy was at the party and you would have seen him, like, go down that hallway if you were in that same area God. instead of following in the hallway. Oh, we'll it's all good. Know. These tragic things happen. Hat things happen. Hard one. You race up the stairs um, and you get to another like balcony. You and Papa are just stranded up in this tower. Okay. Can I climb down? Uh, you can certainly try. It's dire if you fail. Hmm. God. Ugh. Moonshine, I will say since we, Papa yeah. is with Hard One, you know something's wrong. You feel like in your heart, Papa's like, like heart is okay. beating like crazy. Oh, Melora. Okay, then I think I'm going to go back up the stairs. Do I have any sense of where he is? Like, because the other option is I could go outside. If there was a way I could go outside and look up at that, um, at where those glowing hallways led. Sure. Um, I would also do that. Go ahead and roll... I guess roll a wisdom check to see how kind of in tune you and Papa are, that you can kind of tell how far away he is. Oh, not good. Nine. Nine. All you know is that these guys are in trouble. 
I'm gonna report sports Bev. I say, Bev, get over here. Okay. Do you get it? Well, where are you, by I, the way? I'm, I'm in the bathroom. Okay, I need you to meet up with me right now. I head over to the, the hallway. Oh, you okay. you exit the I bathroom. I cast invisible on both of us. Okay, so you guys have to find like a corner and kind of do that so yes, nobody sees so you. so we go into the corner. Okay, so you guys are both invisible. What yeah. are you doing with Balnor? Uh, I think he, uh, tell him, Balnor, keep that bag safe. Can I try to make a move on this pale dwarf woman or should I you go for what? it? You know what? I actually think it's kind of rude to do it first night tomorrow. Okay. What you should do is <laughs> I'll go follow home. up tomorrow. I'm getting a little tipsy anyway. I might do yeah. something I mean, get her address for yeah. sure. Get her digits. Uh, Balnor heads off. You guys are going up the red hallway? Yeah. Yeah. You go up the red hallway and you see a Vinral dwarf running down the stairs, screaming. And I'm assuming you guys kind of like move to the side. Yeah, out yeah, of the way. yeah. We're, I mean, we're side. in full stealth. I'm going until I see Papa. Cool. Mm-hmm. You go up the stairs. You see door open out on the balcony. Gemma Bronzebeard dead with a dagger in her neck <gasps> out on the balcony. Bev, do you think Hardwon did this? Maybe? I don't know. I th- I- okay, I'm going to go look over the edge to see if I see Papa. Once you guys get up to that balcony uh-huh. and Hard One is just like one floor away above you guys, your guys' report spore starts working again. Okay. Fuck, fuck, Bev, fuck, do you fuck. think Hard One did this? Hard One? Did Hard- what? Wait, did, did you? We, did well, you? Excuse you? Did you kill her? What, is fucking, going what else have you been lying about? <laughs> A lot of stuff. I'm gonna come clean about everything, but I didn't fucking kill her. Okay, right? okay. I loved seems, her. Yeah, that's the thing is you kept talking about how you broke up with her, but then I started to get vibes that something else happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. She broke up with me, but it was sort of mutual. It was mostly her dad doing it, but now she's fucking dead. Oh, and what I, happened? I, I right. don't fucking know. We okay. kissed. Okay, right. where we are kissed. you? So we can come to you. Are you with Papa? I'm on the next. I'm on the next balcony. Are you with Papa? Ring, yeah, ring, ring. Papa's up here. Oh, my good Melora, she shines. Right. We'll meet up with you. Is the dagger visible? Yeah, uh, yes, the dagger is in her neck. Um, I wrap my hand in a cloth and take the dagger. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then grab that note. Oh, yeah. Grab the note, too. <sighs> Wait, hard one. Is there anything? Yeah, I. we're going to come to meet you. Is there anything you need from us? Uh, just the note and a fucking hug, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we grab the note, too, and yeah, then yeah, we yeah. just... Okay, Scooch. then you guys scoot up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys are on the second floor. You guys, as you're running up the stairs invisible to get uh-huh. to hard one, yeah. you guys have successfully got taken the dagger. You guys have all your stuff. You guys are reunited, but as you guys are running up the tower, you do hear people running from below up to the balcony because they've heard the one guy yelling. What is okay. uh Y'all, I think that I think that I should cast invisibility on you and Papa as well. Spider climb on all of us, and I think we should just climb down and get the fuck out of here. Moonshine, why spider okay. climb when we can feather fall? Ooh. I guess feather fall on all of us. Oh, do you have enough for all three of you? Uh, let me double check. Wh- how I'm many, pretty wh- sure it's up to five. Choose up to five fallen creatures within range. Awesome. Ooh. Great. Have you cast feather fall on everyone? Yes. Oh. I knew this would come in handy. Yes. I guess I swan dive off the balcony. Yeah. I think we all do. Actually, I want to, like, Olympic dive. So you guys jump off of this balcony, uh, and you feather fall down. As you're feather falling down, you begin to hear a commotion up on that first balcony, and you guys hit the ground pretty hard, falling 60 feet per round, but not enough to do enough damage to you that it uh, matters at this moment. Yeah, we tuck and roll. Yeah. You guys tuck and roll. So you guys land. You guys are now in, like, this back garden area of the keep, but there's okay. still a wall around the front. You begin to hear a commotion up on the balcony, and you see that there are three iron dwarves back here. What do you guys do? I'll say you guys are kind of hiding behind like a evergreen type shrubbery. Can I use nature's wrath? And I'm report boring this plan to everyone else. Can I use nature's wrath to build a vine for us to climb over the fence with? I'll let you do like an arcana check to see how it works, but it'll also be like a sleight of hand. I have another idea. Okay. You and I misty step. Oh, and yeah. And then I use another invisibility on hard one and paw paw. That's good. Great. Let's I'm very do that. unhelpful in these situations because <laughs> yeah. I'm just a big, big okay. hunk of a man. Yeah. Should we so, wait? Could we like, could we give hard one a rope? Yeah. Hold on to the rope ourselves, misty step into the air, and then fling hard one up. With the impact of our misty step, but he would be invisible though. Yeah. Too. Also that. Yeah, we're gonna try. And but do I'm that. saying like we catapult him by like the <laughs> physics of like instantly appearing somewhere else. Yeah. 
I've had a very rough night, <laughs> and I'd like to be catapulted. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to cast invisibility on Hardwan okay. and Papa, okay. um, and then look at Bev. And can we coordinate Misty steps? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is just like a rich person's keep. This isn't a military keep or anything. Uh-huh. I'll say with invisible and with Misty step, you're not even going to need to roll a stealth check to okay. get out over the wall. Oh. So just go ahead and tell me how you do the catapult thing to hard one. Okay. Right, I guess we probably do the misty step dance. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just sort of a dosy do. Yeah. Lots of linking limbs. <laughs> Maybe we. You said there was like an evergreen tree. Yes. You guys are like hiding behind a like patch of evergreen trees. That's like yeah. their version of a garden. You know what I think we do is yeah. I think we, our misty step trajectory is like right through the boughs yeah. of the evergreen tree, so that then we sort of the rope will come through and sort of like fling hard one over the tree. Yep, using the tree as a fulcrum. <laughs> exactly. Great. Hard one, you shoot up over the wall. <laughs> Just a really depressed hard one. I'm like almost <laughs> picturing like be- beginning of Bojack Horseman when he's just like yeah. dead in the face and like. <laughs> oh, just, he's yes. ragdolling fully. Yeah. I await the sweet mercy of death. <laughs> so you guys, you guys get on the other side of the wall. What are you guys doing now? Because you're in the streets and you know that these streets are quasi heavy patrolled. Do you think we should like head to the front of the gate and like pretend like we're just leaving with everyone else? No, I think I, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably better to leave in like a sea of people. But if yeah. there's like okay. even a trickle of people leaving just because the party was winding down. I think we try and I guess like, it wasn't winding down. It yeah, was it beginning. wasn't. So I think maybe we'll stealth towards the front gate and then when people start leaving, we'll mm-hmm. join that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, try and find Balnor. So you guys just follow the uh, trickle of people. You see that there are a few other dwarves that are kind of going home early. They just had dinner and mm-hmm. decided to kind of call it a night early. Hard one is invisible. Hard one is yeah. invisible. In spirit and in reality. <laughs> Balnor, Balnor finds you guys. Uh, he was already walking home. You guys catch up to Balnor. Balnor throws his arms around you guys and he goes, I had a great night. <laughs> I trip Balnor. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> hey. Oh, you got to watch the stones here. Yeah, hard ones here. Yeah, oh, that's what, hard What one. do you mean? There was an assassin. Someone assassinated Gemma, and we kind of, it kind of probably, I don't know if anyone's going to find out that that she was meeting up with Hardwan, but if they do, suspicion will be cast on Hardwan, and if they don't, Gemma's still dead. Sorry, Hardwan. Yeah. So the, guys- big, the big clip note here is that my ex is dead, and we were... Really, maybe going to get back together. <laughs> she opened the door a tiny little bit. I've been, <laughs> I've been lying for a long time, but this really happened. Oh, gosh, buddy. Yeah, you guys get back to the ship, and oh. I'll say that hard one, you can kind of un-invis yourself. Oh, okay. Okay, I have a crazy suggestion right now. Mm-hmm. Should we just get in touch with the Bronzebeard family and offer them the mithril armor? To wage war against the band. <laughs> I, I think we need we need to get we need to get Jane. Yeah. No, we need to get Jaina here. She's the only other person that knows that I'm not a shithead. The rest of the bronze beards hate me, and they're not great people either. Um, so before Gemma was assassinated, uh, and right before we kissed, by the way, because that also happened. Nice dude. Uh, she said. <laughs> That she was, she that there was like some weird shady shit going on. She hadn't even met the Pale Prince. What? She hadn't met him, and he was supposed to be here when she got here. There was also that uh, woman who said was saying that she was the Pale Prince's uh, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. I bet Jaina would know more information. But also, we gotta find this Pale Prince. We gotta we gotta ask more questions of the royal family because they're eventually who we need to talk to. I know. That's the thing is we can't just we we eventually need. The king of what the is king's it, Caldera? Yeah. King. But maybe Jaina will know. And yeah. she's an ally. Everybody else hates us. And I know that we And they're l- gonna think I killed Gemma. Yeah, uh-huh. Jaina's the only person that will think that I didn't kill Gemma. So my only thought is I could try and use animal friendship to befriend a sparrow to send her a message. That seems normal. I don't have animal messenger stocked though. <laughs> just animal friendship. <laughs> let's just, let's make friends with an animal. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Okay, I go up to the deck. Is there like a winter thrush? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna try to find like a bird. <whistles> Moonshine, you do a whistle. And Where the hell is Jaina even staying? She's probably gonna be near her sister's dead body at the castle. How am I gonna describe to this 
owl how to find Jaina. She's the only dwarven maiden there without a beard, dressed in men's she armor. She doesn't have a beard. No beard. Yeah, that'll help. Okay. Yeah, bold choice. Uh, you see a snow she owl keeps it tightly shaped. comes <laughs> and uh, lands on the ship. All right, y'all. Ooh. We got to ask Jaina to meet us, but we got to meet her in a place that if this message goes to the wrong person, we'll be able to, like, a place that we can hole up, and if the wrong person comes, we just abandon. Yeah. So, like, not the ship is what I'm trying to say. A dive bar. A dive bar. Okay. We'll invite her to the tavern. Not the one we were in before. Right? No. We were kicked out of that. The poorest tavern in this rich-ass city. Yeah. (laughs) Let's invite her to the poorest tavern so you guys had the one tavern ice to meet you that you got kicked out of you shouldn't go back to problem uh, but you remember passing another tavern called the fox and the thrush okay so i'm gonna write a note that says uh dear Jaina, we have information about Gemma. meet us at the fox and the thrush should we sit- give some sort of identifying thing no we'll just recognize her okay so that's yeah. all i say i don't sign it i just put it did in- you write it Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Papa wrote it. Ram, ram. Um, Bev, you uh, look at it, you see that it's just his mo. Bev writes it. I, I proofread it. <laughs> you proofread it. it. He's getting better. He's doing more than just I, mo. Can yeah. we say that the note is now mo crossed out in red and then the note And then fine that? script from Beverly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's mo, but you put an E this time. Ram, very impressive. Ram. Okay, so I roll it up, uh, give it to the owl, and I say, go to the bronze dwarf with no beard. Woo, woo. See, the owl flies off. God, I All hope right. that thing understands. Fingers crossed. Owls are wise. Even if he doesn't get to Jaina, I need a fucking drink, so let's go to the tavern. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right. Are we going to the tavern now? Yeah. It's up to you guys. I think well, I mean, so. that's what our note yeah. says. Uh, before we do that, um, I pull out the weapon that I took. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Bev, you have a <gasps> uh, hard one. You see Bev has the bloody knife. Mm-hmm. I inspect it. Do I know yeah. anything about this knife? We should get rid of this, but I figured uh, it was yeah. worth keeping yeah. so we could. Yeah. I'm a prime ahead. suspect, and now I have the murder weapon. Yeah, go, ahead, yeah, yeah. go ahead and make an investigation check on yeah. it. I got a 13. I got a 12 for investigation. Hard one. I'll say you're super pissed. I'll give you an advantage. Thank you. You're inspired. Ooh! Bev. I, I got, got an a, 11. <laughs> I got a 17 on 17. investigation. Bev, you look at it, and you see that there is a green gem in there, like an emerald. Poison is it damage. magic? Poison it is... damage, like, oh. like my fiancé. <laughs> we do know that he could fucking do that. Moron. <laughs> Did your fiancé kill my ex? <laughs> This looks oh, like a, Malora. <laughs> a goddamn yeah, soap did, opera. The guy that you we saw. we are just your players and you are putting on a show. <laughs> Hard one. The guy you saw definitely did not have a hunchback and right, definitely. Cool. Oh, my fiance has a hunchback. I forgot. Yeah, it wasn't that guy. Um, but they would have gotten it from him. We could bring this to the Geomancer. Tomorrow we could right, ask him who he made this for. Yeah, let's hide this for now. Yeah, let's keep should it on. Should we hide it or should we just toss it in the ocean? Are we going to need it anymore? I think we should show it to him because he yeah. might say, I made this and I sold it to this person. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Should we? It feels dangerous to have it in a bag of holding. It feels dangerous to have it on the boat. What do we do? I have a secret it? compartment in the uh, in the captain's quarters. That is I'm, true. Oh, I'm setting myself up to be framed. <laughs> this is exactly what the assassin wanted. <laughs> this is wanted. not good. We can't do that. No. You know what? I'll just guys. I'll take it. This is why I'm here. If I get caught, I'll say that it was me. No. No, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't no, I... say it was you. But I. If you get caught, then we'll go through the normal standard investigatory procedure and you'll have an alibi. You were dancing out there with a woman the entire time. But Balnor the Brave, beholding things in the bag is is your yeah. burden to bear. I think it is yours. I will put it in a separate bag and I will guard it with my life. Put it in a tiny bag <laughs> into the main bag. He puts it in a tiny bag. <gasps> Balnor, are you, are you sure? This is what I'm here for. Oh, my lord. I am here to carry your items, regardless of how incriminating they may be. You know, World War II's loss is our game. <laughs> you honor us, Bell. World War II now? <laughs> oh, right, one. Um, yeah, I, I turned it's to Bell. I, I honestly feel bad for how good of a night I had and how bad of a night everyone else had. Balnor, what you're doing is so stupid and courageous, it could only be done by a member of the Band of Boobs. <sighs> He, you see, he starts to tear up. You guys, you guys think I'm a boob? 
Yeah. That's an absolute boob move, yeah. dude. <laughs> You're a boob. Balnor gives you a hug hard one. <laughs> boobs, rec- boobs recognize boobs. I think we all probably hug hard one. Yeah, I try yeah. not to cry into everybody's shoulders. Oh. You guys all hug. And hard one, despite the sadness, you know that you and Gemma will always have Frostwind. She did kiss me. <laughs> and, that, and that's where we'll end our session. <laughs> Oh, I want to go meet up with Jaina so bad. Yeah, this one, this one hurt me, man. This yeah. one hurt me. Are you mad at me for going? No, I'm mad at myself for rolling a two. I only that was went. Me. I'm mad at myself for taking pity on that dude, but I don't. It was know. just. It was, it, was, it was just a lot of bad luck. He was yeah. the one who got us in. But every we did everything that we would do. Like you yeah. guys, that was true to Moonshine. Moonshine would have yeah. done that. And Bev would have helped the guy with his bowel. Uh, with his <laughs> it's also, it's also well, like if hard... obviously that I wouldn't change for the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If hard one, if if you rolled really well on that perception check, it still would have been like you with none of your stuff really fighting an assassin that is trying to kill like somebody with no armor and low HP. She could have still like kind of hidden behind you and you guys could have fought it out. Would have been kind of a cool fight scene, but yeah. instead it ended up being a super fucking tragic moment. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. I yeah. never let's got un- to see how awesome of a fighter I was. <laughs> she did get to see how big your quads have gotten. That's true yeah. though. She said I look good. Man, <laughs> I loved I loved that fucking plan of slipping the note. Uh, yeah. That was beautiful. In her, in her dinner. I'm glad we got a moment, but I'll talk more about I'm it on the short rest. rest. Yeah. But wait, say what you're glad about. I'm gonna say I'm glad that I'm glad that we got the fucking note back because that was just like incarnation. Yeah. 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 But this is all primo short rest stuff. Yes, Absolutely. guys, head on over to patreon.com slash nadpod. That's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. Do not sing yet. We are <laughs> We, we are aren't yet. We aren't, we aren't. <laughs> Youth of the nation yet. Uh guys, we have a lot of things to plug. Caldwell, you start. I would love to. Uh, I would like to plug Cartoon Hell, a new show that me and Jonathan Tinkle are doing mm. over on Dropout. Uh, we have preview clips that air on Drawfee every week. But if you want to subscribe to the show, it's a new cartoon show based on the classic Drawfee format you know and love. You can head over to bit.ly slash cartoon hell. Uh, you get uh, a free trial. See if you like it. I think it's great. Um, it's got a lot of fun guest stars and drawings and cartoons. Please watch it. Dope. Uh, yes, and <laughs> if you subscribe on. to Dropout, you'll also get um, me and Emily's show uh, with our our DM daddy, Brendan Mulligan, um, and a bunch of other friends from College Humor uh, called Dimension Twenty. Yeah, uh, it's a very cool D and D show with. Uh, that's a video play show. It's great. And uh, then also, if you already have Netflix, just type hot date and you can watch me and Murph's first season. You yeah. can also press the, the the microphone button and say hot date and it'll come up. Oh right. shit, yeah. do that. Holy yeah. shit, I'm gonna go home and do that. Or just yell at someone else and tell them to type it in. I Ooh. guess have a servant is what yeah. I'm getting at. Wow. So, what so, you always suggest. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, go to Netflix and uh, check out Hot Date, me and Emily's sketch show and buy our book, Hey You Up, How to Turn Your Booty Call into Your Emergency Contact. Uh, it's available on Amazon and Audible. Jake, you got some stuff. Uh, yeah, Lonely and Horny is also out on Dropout. Season one is out is uh, is out there now, and season two is coming in November. Boyfict. Okay, guys, um, follow us on Twitter, at Jake Hurwitz is Jake, at C.H. Murph is me, at E.X.Ford is Emily, and at Caldy is Caldwell, and tweet about the show using hashtag NADPOD, that's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. We are, we are, the youth of the nation. Break it down for Gemma. We are, the youth of the nation. Rest in peace, baby. Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. <laughs> Taking too soon. It's the end of the episode, everybody, and that means we need to shout out our benevolent Council of Elders. Oh, and Pelora, sit in your pocket, you gods. Starting with Matthew M., the Bullywug Prince, master of ceremonies at the annual Bullywug Ball, an event so bright that you need to wear sunglasses because of all the gorgeous smiles. Oh, I love it like a commercial. Brad D., the only pebble pot that isn't craven. Brad D. is so brave. There's actually a ton of rumors that they are, in fact, not pure pebble pot. My goodness, Jay Loma 72, aka Steelbreaker, Hard One's gym inspiration, mm. does chin ups with their chin. Now that's a thick neck. Ooh, wow, I can picture it. I can see the veins. Thick neck. Thick neck. Neck. Andrew A, aka Feldsbar Liegarden, the half elf. 
Feldspar is also half Jewish and celebrates Hanukkah and Christmas. Oh, that's nice. Taylor Pawpaw the Sixth, a legendary bard to whom no item isn't an instrument, is scheduled to play Gemma's funeral, where they will play I Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata on a lute made of Gemma's beard hair. Tragic. Wow, we're going there immediately. Okay, Dylan B, a super weak wizard who wields 12 swords, looks super badass at bars, but his sister won't trust him to babysit his niece. Simon W, the bootleg of Hard One Soft Loss, has never kissed his ex, but also his ex is still alive. Again, brutal, brutal, merciless. Danny P, Bohemia's resident artist, painted Hard One Senior Portrait at the Dwarfenage, <laughs> will be painting Gemma's obituary headshot. This is just a, the roast of Gemma Bronzebeard, recently killed dwarf. <laughs> Tom P, father of the realm, once serenader of sleeping babies who recently graduated to entertainer of wide awake yeah, babies, baby. is said to be so good at hide and seek and peekaboo, he regularly gets missing person reports filed on him. Wow, Spencer Caskbrew, patron of patron elder of libations, ale maker to gods and heroes of Bohemia alike, invented the signature his and hers cocktails for Gemma and the Pale Prince's wedding. Who wrote these? <laughs> I did. You wrote all these Gemma ones? <laughs> You gotta go there, you know. If you got a bruise, you're kind of curious how much it'll yeah, hurt you to push poke it. That br- bruise. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> the pale princess. The pale princess was a white Russian, but with Goldschlager. And Gemma's was a Red Bull and vodka, which seems uninspired, except that Red Bull doesn't exist in Bohemia. Spencer Cask Brew just invented it. Pedro E, Bard of the Mountains, plays a series of summer concerts in Frostwind called Rock the Rift. And Rocket, he does. Griffin SD, a.k.a. the Stranger, the Silverborn Dragon, Eldritch Knight of the own, owner of the Badger's Pint Inn and Tavern. After their falling out with the Badger, Griffin SD is in litigation with the Badger about whether or not the Badger has legal rights to the word Badger and is currently considering renaming it. That seems not right. The Badger does not have <laughs> rights to all Badgers. Beardman Dan, the longest beard in Bohemia, has used it like Rapunzel to hoist a lover to their window, but has also used it in some light spur of the moment bondage scenarios. Yummy. Very kinky. Tell me about it. Salacious. Spicy Scott D, the seamstress who sewed the bag of holding it was an accident. However, they were trying to make a messenger bag to put their laptop in and accidentally used enchanted thread and an arcane needle. Aaron C, an airship contractor who specializes in making secret compartments to store hand-drawn pictures of your exes and dead parents. You just, you need those. You need a good contractor to make those for you. Hermes W, the Bat King, is planning on flying over Frostwind during the wedding to get a glimpse. Doesn't know Jack shit about Gemma, so is still planning on doing a flyby. T. Alex, a selfless dentist who enlists who enlisted in a Dentists Without Borders program and has been working with the Dwarfins at the Dwarfinage, nightly prays that someone will show up with a bunch of spare teeth to donate to their cause. <laughs> they need some bullywugs. They do. Parker E., the first Bohemian to ever take a walk-me-down. Started an international trend but asks not for money or recognition, just Free walk me downs. RJW, one of the nannerflies that is currently humping in Moonshine's <laughs> jar. Little does RJ know, but the fate of the nannerfly people rests in their hands. Oh no, terrifying. Is that true? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> you know more than I do. Spartus killed the polar bears that made Gemma's polar bear sliders. It's important to know where your food came from, and this meal came from Spartus punching a bear. That is a real fucking hunter. (laughs) Adam R., Bahumia's number one arcane dealer, has only one rule. Adam won't sell to kids. He gives it to them for free. Okay. You know what? It's about the children. That's why we do what we do. Brent B. taught Alana's magic. Not wizard magic, though. The magic of intermittent fasting. Brent's got her eating within an eight-hour window, and it's got her looking cut. Good for her. Cassandra MHP has so much HP, she would have survived the assassination attempt and just gone back down to the party for dessert with a big old knife in their neck. Yikes, but also I'd love to see it. Maddie C, A.K. Maddie Big Grits. Matt C once rolled a D-1000, and guess what? He still crit. Well, he rolled a 20, but we're going to count that as a crit. Danielle the Dastardly Dame. Danielle is so dastardly, she held the door open for the assassin who killed Gemma. Oh, dastardly. Hugh C, a.k.a. Aldor Frostbuck, MV 
VIP of the Giant Wars, crewed on the SS Stormborn and fought alongside Elias and Red, unbeknownst to the boobs, is currently wandering the tundra, looking for the perfect view of the Purple Rift for a romantic snow picnic. That's cute. Manny P, a.k.a. Manny the Mundane, accidental deity who got in the way of a lich's spell to reach divinity. When you go to a bar for the first time and it just happens to be happy hour, that's Manny blessing you with his savings. Wow. Gemma could have used some of Manny's help. Am <laughs> I right? Easy, Am easy. I right? Daniel, you. Hey, you wrote, you wrote some too. I saw some Gemma in sure. your section. Daniel, you, a.k.a. Multifor, the owner of a sweet boat that sounds like Gilbert Gottfried. Daniel is in some hot water after the boat tweeted some controversial takes and people aren't sure whether to blame him or the boat itself. Jordan DJ, legendary DJ of the realm, played the wedding welcoming party and kept everyone good and distracted with his sick beats. Sorry, can I just go back to Daniel Yu? You sure. gotta separate the man from his boat. <laughs> okay, sure. that's all. That's all. I just thought of that as I was reading it. Jeffrey S., Lord of the Fjord, born of the sword, and slayer of Born, the kobold. That's right, that well-hung kobold from episode 6 was resurrected and Jeffrey killed him with a frickin' blunderbuss. Xavier C. runs Xavier's school for gifted dwarfins and teaches Aww. young dwarfins how to become insanely powerful. It's borderline irresponsible. That's so cute. I would love, I would love to see a dwarfin. <laughs> and just in general? It. Just a childless dwarf? You mean a parentless dwarf? Sh- or yes, parentless. <laughs> I, I suppose it's good that they're childless. <laughs> That dwarfin with no parents but so many children. Okay, Cutter W, a high elf dandy turned crick barkitect. Each stump comes with a built in timeout bag and an ultra soft floor so your squatters are comfortable. Lex Sketch, a sketch artist for the Esri Bubble Police. Lieutenant Candi- Candace Bricker describes everyone as a renegade, so Lex has to draw a lot of leather jackets. Bubble Police is a really funny phrase that we have not said nearly enough. <laughs> John S., aka Schubert the Mushroom, the band, thanks John S. for helping them get Rapport Sports, a mechanism that lets the players plan to womp Murph right in front of his dang face. You got womped. You got your bell rung. Ryan M. saw the assassin entering the stairwell and was looking for someone to tell, but stopped for too long at the buffet table. See, you're all over that assassin shit, too. I did write a lot of Gemma. I wrote a lot of Gemma. Elena C. is rumored to be marrying the pale prince in place of Gemma. We'll unite the dwarves and live in a cool castle if they don't get assassinated. Andrew M., an iron pleased dwarf who befriended a young boy and decided to rebel against their programming to fight for love and peace. They were remote detonated by Iron Dwarf HQ minutes later. Brutal. Ricky, a.k.a. Tricky Ricky of the Cricky, was supposed to host the after party for the Vineral Wedding Gala, but it turned into a tasteful last minute candlelight vigil slash rager for Gemma instead. You, you gotta rage. You gotta rage. Rage into the dying of the light, uh, Gemma's light being the dying one. Andrew R., a gnomish music professor who wrote the bard book that Beverly has been studying. Looks like Kenny G, if the G in the Kenny G stood for gnome. I'm honestly glad that we're doing this like a week after we recorded Uh because we are making a lot of Gemma dying jokes and I don't know that I could have handled them a week ago. Cannibalistic Cthulhu, a terrifying boss monster who has like 50 different final forms. Seriously, every time you think you've defeated them, they turn into a boat with wings or some other bullshit. It's super annoying. Michael McD, head mixologist at the Blue Mana Inn, tried to open a Blue Mana in Glade Home, but the <gasps> elves there only drink light beer. No. Which seems out of character, but it's canon now, so you, so what can you do? Oh, you'd think they'd love cocktails. Victor T. Balnor's boy, whose loving dad was ripped from his family and transported to another world. As a way of coping with his loss, Victor invented the sleeping bag and was later awarded the gold medal for scientific achievement (laughs) by the Kaiser himself. Henry A., the world's first (laughs) half-elf, half-dwarf, a.k.a. dwelf hybrid. Unfortunately, he's totally mortal except for his beard. Lance W. runs a rival clothing store in Frostwind called Fancy Lances. They basically sell the same stuff, but all their pelts are still alive. It's also a pet store. Justin I, the fluid druid, can store water like a camel and cast powerful ice spells. Also the only person in Bohemia that has to pee more than Jake. I didn't think that. It, well, it certainly doesn't exist on Earth, but sure. maybe there is someone who needs to pee more than Jake in Bohemia. Caleb, head of the 
head of a junior winter wolves recruitment program known as the Popsicles. Beverly has applied seven times since he arrived. Clayton M., a claymation Dalmatian. Their spots shift and swirl like a Rorschach test. It's Ooh. not a very useful power in battle, but it does allow Clayton to quickly ascertain what sort of relationship you have with your mother. Oh, interesting. TJM, the total judo master. Do not get too close to TJM unprompted because this cat will flip your whole ass, no questions asked. The professional, the only lawyer to ever successfully beat Papa in litigation, Dick Wolf is currently developing their life into a procedural crime drama called Poix and Order. I shall be tuning in. Jacob C., the card-carrying barbarian. The card is made of metal and is super sharp. Also, it has a handle. I guess technically it's more of a knife than a card, but it does have Jacob's email address carved into it. So who's to say? Elena M., a tailor who specializes in formal wear for tiny mammals. Unfortunately, they work in Esri, and the Chosen have put a heavy tariff on all goof-related uh, garments. Maybe they have an armadillo shell with the, a fur-lined armadillo shell, huh? Because I thought I could definitely get that for Papa. Gone off! The gunsmith who made Old Cobb's blunderbuss. It's a one-of-a-kind weapon, not because it's special, but because Gone Off went super bankrupt right after making it. Mick Pox, the codemaster who created our amazing website. Well, they, power the, they power their computer with an arcane orb filled with lightning and keep their Red Bulls at the perfect temperature with a constant chill-touch cantrip. Their office chair isn't magic, but it's ergonomic as fuck. Earl and Kathleen L., a pair of married nightmares. They gallop triumphantly through the sky, leaving heart-shaped smoke in their dust. Due to the power of their love, they can never be polymorphed. Dylan M., straight up the assassin that killed Gemma. <laughs> Dylan, watch out. Hard one is coming for you. Jab G., a contractor at the Crick who, for a fee, can turn your stump into a log or your log into a stump. Really, it, ju it just shifts it 90 degrees, but, you know, they will charge you a pretty dead leaf for it. Corbin A., an Asimar who looks strikingly like David Boreanis, uh, causing everyone who meet them to make a Fallen Angel reference. Wow, I would as well. Atlas, a bard who specializes in improv comedy and stars in the popular show Bahumia's Line, is it anyway? That's pretty good. Thank you. Bowing J out, this has been Moonshine Zybin. <laughs> Jostrich, a normal ostrich, until one day they put on a perfect tailored suit from Josh Joss Hay Bank, and without even trying, got promoted to head of marketing and public relations at The Chosen. All right, that one wasn't so good. You're one for two. Cameron McGee. Cameron McGee, a cartoon mouse married to Cameron. God damn it. Minnie, who looks just like Cameron McGee, but is wearing a bow. One for three. <laughs> E.L. Dreg, the Kirk of Frostwind. And yes, that was a Gilmore Girls reference. One for four. Cameron C. <laughs> Landscaper in Frostwind. Mostly really good at making snowmen. There's a lot of pressure to have the best snowmen on your block in Frostwind. BJW, the praying mantis who named Joe Joe. <laughs> Unfortunately, Joe didn't reciprocate the favor, so BJW is still just praying mantis number five <laughs> to their friends. Damiel R, part of an elite cadre of cavaliers, the horse boys, ready and willing to be a powerful ally to the band of boobs, if only the boobs would ask nicely. And they do not do that. No. Quentin J, a wild, uncouth barbarian with an uncharacteristically posh name. Quentin J enjoys eating with their hands, plank jacks, and painting pagan symbols on their chest in the blood of their enemies. Typical Quentin. Caleb C, a warlock who hates Halloween. Caleb, sh Caleb shutters their windows in October, but has the sickest light display on the block during Christmas. The Bastard of Norvegia. Norvegia may sound like a charming Nordic hamlet, but it's actually a sweltering hot island off the coast of Bohemia where the infamously <laughs> sweet Bohemian mango grows. <laughs> <laughs> of the North. Sworn say that. Say that. Say that name fully, because Jeff of the North, sworn enemy of Jeff of the South, and for good reason too. Jeff of the South is racist as fuck. Joshua S. A boob before the band of boobs even existed. A lonely boob, though. More of a solo project boob. I love a solo boob. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Damar, florist at Frostwind, who makes floral arrangements of dead twigs and frozen roses, a.k.a. froses. 
was supposed to be the florist for Gemma's wedding and is definitely still going to charge the Bronbeards the deposit, at least. I mean, that's why the deposit's there. Jeremy B., leader of the Bumble Wasps, a deadly poisonous airborne insect who pollinates the bramble lilies down by the creek and can kill a man with one sting. The creek is terrifying. <laughs> and finally, Logan C., the forensic S expert who will find the stray hair from Hard One's beard that got tangled in Gemma's beard during their kiss, but will purposefully destroy the evidence to save Hard One's life. He just took the rule book and threw it right out. Right out the window. Oh. Right off the balcony. <laughs> okay, thank you so much to all of our listeners, all of our Patreon subscribers, and of course, our benevolent Council of Elders. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash nadpod to listen to the short rest, and we'll catch you guys next week with another episode. Thank you. Adios, mon amor. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>